all of this, I think, with this sold separately, it's probably close to 1500 bucks. The Mini 4 Pro pretty much comes with its fly more combo. However, this is now compatible with the Mini 4 Pro, and this is also now compatible with the Mini 4 Pro. Now you're probably thinking, but this is, this is FPV, like this gives you a completely different everything. The Mini 4 Pro could never do it, right? I've never flown with the motion controller in my life, so I think I should better start with what I know best. Now, when comparing the two controllers, <laughs> you can see this one actually comes with a screen. Well, this one has the O4 built in. Well, guess what? The Mini 4 Pro also works on the O4 and has external antennas. I am not a big fan of these goggles. You have to hold the whole thing and kind of pull it up and pull it down. I don't like the extra bulk at the back here. My original goggles had a much smaller battery. And I guess DJI doesn't really want you moving this up and down. And that's why they made the double tap feature over here. It's a very close up video. I can reach for stuff. I can get it done. I think I'm good now. I'll switch back to the regular stuff. We're in normal mode. And my goal is going to be, as you see on my screen here, to fly around with the controller. This feels a lot like um, flying a regular drone except when you tilt you can see that the camera tilts with you right, I'm gonna crack it around over here kind of do a whoopsie doops I've got to remember that I do not have obstacle avoidance stay over the water whoa heading into the wind look at that I'm at full speed ahead and it's it's just crawling right now it's literally just crawling so we're gonna have to go in sports mode and sports mode will beat it up and just let it go. I'm shooting in 4K60. I think I've got the camera in auto. I didn't check my settings. It looks perfectly exposed over here. What warrants me taking this extra remote, this extra Avada, the extra three batteries, the extra charger? What warrants me doing that? Let me see if I can hit this gap under here without crashing. What warrants me doing that when I can supposedly do all of this with the uh, with the uh, with the Mini 4 Pro, so yeah, it flies okay. It's punishing in the wind, like the wind is pushing it around, so I'm fighting it on the controllers. Been flying for four minutes. I don't see anything um, exciting or exorbitant here. I'm just gonna land. All right, let's switch over to the Mini 4 Pro. No light leak, no bleed. I'm in FPV mode. Let's give this one a go. Now, this is a narrower field of view. I will say that this one just feels a lot more, uh, a lot more tight. I do have a wide lens. I'll throw it on in a little bit, but it looks like I'm struggling in this 35 mile an hour winds. I don't think any of these two drones should be flown in 35 mile an hour winds but if you're gonna fly anyone i would definitely say the avada does a better job what i like about this is that the field of view you see here is the field of view that you will get kind of want to hit this gap there's some kids over there playing there we go i don't want to get too close to kids because they like to chase stuff let's get onto that tree I'd love to fly both of these drones on a less windy day. I'll probably do another video. If you guys want, tell me in the comment section below. Now you're probably asking me why I'm flying low. A, because of the wind and B, because that's what FPV is all about. It's about flying low and in close proximity to stuff. So yeah, I'm actually, because I'm used to flying the Mini, it just, it just handles a lot better for me. I'm gonna put on the wide angle lens and then we can see the difference. Just pop it on, twist and pop it on, and that should give you a wider field of view. The wide angle lens definitely makes a huge, huge difference in my opinion. And I thought this gimbal would be bouncing around. No, actually does a really good job. And I'm in sports mode. Uh, the only way you can really fly up close to things, to be honest, is if you're in sports mode, because if you have the sensors on, it'll kind of block you. So if you don't have that kind of proximity with your drone in terms of knowing your drone and how it operates, you might want to get the Mini 4 prop guards. All right, let's bring her down. DJI doesn't sell you the Avada with this controller. They actually want you to fly it with this. So here goes nothing. Okay, how do you take off? I guess you push up. Whoa. 
okay. What just happened there? So I'm guessing all I need to do is touch the trigger and point the circle where I want to go. Wow. Not too bad. Normal mode. It's in normal mode. Wow, it's flying really nice. Just, wow, this is, this is pretty easy to fly. <laughs> This is actually very intuitive and very easy to fly. This, this reminds me of the ghost drone. Have you guys ever heard of the ghost drone back in 2015, 2016? And let's unlock this baby. Let's go to sports. Whoa, sports is fast. I'm getting 436, 30, wow. Sports mode is pretty dope. I'm getting up to 36 miles an hour. This is insane. I feel like it's faster with this. Like how much am I hitting now? 34, 35 miles an hour. Yeah, easy 35 miles an hour. This is insane. All right, I've got the Mini 4 Pro now. Let's put these goggles on and see if there's any difference. I don't like this strap for some reason. Let's see what we get. Okay, a lot tamer. Sports, there we go. Definitely not as aggressive, but not bad. It's not bad. It's not aggressive like the Avada, but I'm pretty sure you'll get, you get, I'm getting 21 miles an hour. Yeah, the, the Avada was definitely doing 35, which is a lot faster. But this is not bad at all. It's not bad, 20 something. Whoa, I'm not going into that kite. Let's bust a U-turn. Go down, go around, pass these people. Yeah. Yeah, unless the speed is a thing for you, the Avada is definitely faster, but this feels the same way. Definitely feels the same way, just a little slower. Now this, you can't do any of the janky flips and tricks, the Avada wheel, if you want to replicate and play like you're flying FPV. Um, is it worth paying that extra money for? I don't know, you're gonna have to decide on that one. But this Mini flies pretty dope. You can get some pretty nice FPV shots with this, even low flying shots as well. Nice. Oh, look, the drone's flying again. <laughs> all right, let's land. Oh, you hold this. There you go. You guys seen all the footage for yourself? Let me know what you think. This thing is pretty beefy and it is heavy. If you put the Mini 4 Pro on top of it, it's not that much of a difference. Look, you've got more meat on the sides compared to the Mini 4 Pro. It's hollow over here. It's hollow over here. But they've pretty much got the same length and the Mini 4 Pro just sticks out a little bit. Why is that important? Because if you think about it from a gap perspective, any gap that you can hit with this drone, you can probably hit with this one too. See that? The Mini 4 Pro just sticks out a little bit. Xavier here from the future interrupting this video to share some quick thoughts now that you've seen both of them fly in FPV mode. The Mini 4 Pro is a quieter drone much quieter actually now even though the avada 2 is quieter than the avada 1 it's still not as quiet as the mini 4 pro even though the avada's camera is better suited for fpv and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second this is actually a better quality camera if you compare the night footage you'll see that this has a faster aperture it lets more light in and as a result you'll just get better image quality at night also remember you only saw me flying fpv but this is also a cinema drone. Actually, this is a cinema drone more than it is an FPV drone. This does have 360 obstacle avoidance. It is absolutely lighter and you get more battery life. It's also a better photography drone. This gimbal does turn and give you vertical content as well for your TikTok and your Instagram stories. Did I mention this has a ton of features like waypoints, like hyperlapse, like hyperlapse waypoints, like tracking. And it's got smart shots built in too. Let's not forget smart shots. And a lot more things that I'm probably forgetting to mention. But this video is more along the FPV lines, but do your homework. You'll see how much features this little thing has. Last but not least, and definitely worth mentioning, this has a controller with a built-in screen, which is really cool 
for cinema flying. And then when you put the goggles on, the screen goes blank and you can uh, immerse yourself in the FPV world. But the DJI Avada is no slouch. This is a specialty drone, at least when it comes to FPV. And that's why even when you're flying with the motion controller, you can do flips with the press of a button. Side flips, front flips, back flips while you are flying, even if you don't know how to fly in manual mode, even though some might think it's gimmicky. It's just something you can't do with the Mini 4 Pro. It also has the hyper smooth to make the footage just smoother and buttery looking coming out of this camera. Overall, the drone is just more durable. It's built to take a little bumps here and there. Not anything too serious though. Just because the Mini 4 Pro has a better quality camera doesn't mean it has a better camera suited for FPV. This camera is wider and that's what you need when you're flying FPV. The wider, the better because as you're swinging and swinging through your motions, you can see all the wide angles so you can kind of see if you're going to swing into anything. Now putting the wide angle lens on the Mini 4 Pro, as you saw, did help. But if you're going to get really serious about your FPV game, then yes, you're going to appreciate this wider camera. So wider is better for FPV at least. This one was definitely doing a better job in the wind and I'm sure it's a little bit faster. So both are fast, but this one is a little, it's got more pep to its step. Built-in prop guards is a huge, huge feature because that means you can bump off of stuff and not have to worry about breaking your propellers and falling out of the sky. They do sell prop guards for the Mini 4 Pro, but they're kind of big and bulky and it defeats the purpose. And it's more for indoor flying, not outdoors. Last but not least, this drone goes into manual mode. However, as big as a pro that that seems like, most people will not ever put this drone in manual mode. Unless you're buying this drone because you just really need a Cinewhoop or you're looking for a long range Cinewhoop. If you're buying this drone as a beginner or someone who wants to get a taste of FPV flying, especially if you're older, it's going to be a little challenging and difficult to learn manual flying. Younger folks buying this drone will definitely take some more risk, beat this stuff up a little bit more and learn to fly in manual. But older folks will probably just end up in sports mode, zipping this thing around, which is okay too. But you remember this huge feature of manual flight you will not use and as a result you should really look into the mini 4 pro with the goggles and the motion controller if you're never gonna put this drone in manual i'm just saying all right that's it that's xavier from the future let's head back to the video and wrap things up i didn't dji make it so these plastic pieces could be removed i do not know i would imagine you should be able to click these plastic guards off and click new ones on and keep flying but no dji will make you send this to them and pay a fee to get it fixed and that means that when you're flying this you have to have a certain amount of caution because it's not very fixable if you're interested in my thoughts on this drone in manual mode uh, hit me up in the comment section below. I'll switch it over to manual, run some tests and give you my feedback. I hope this taught you how to get the honey without spending a lot of money. If you need LUTs for your Avada 2, your Avada 1, your Mini 4, your Mini 3, your Mavic 3 Pro, even your O3 FPV drone, make sure you head to the comment section below and you'll see a link or in the description section for my LUTs or you can just head over to www.dronexfactor.com. With that being said, also think about becoming a Patreon. It's only $1 a month. That's $12 a year. It's like texting me on my phone and you'll get a response if you have any questions or additional things that you need me to answer for you with that being said guys i've got to run i will catch you guys well whenever i can